Hi. I've caught an annoying summer cold. I'm feeling better, but I've lost my voice. So this seems like a good time to try a text-to-speech service I bought. It's called Mike Monster. I paid for it, so this is my honest review. I get no monetization from this service or anybody. This is free information. There seem to be a lot of these AI text-to-speech things now. So I looked at all of them, eh, well, I looked at the ones that seemed recent. They all follow a similar pay-as-you-go format. You buy a subscription, and you get a certain number of text-to-speech recordings per month. Now to be honest, I'm both skeptical and a fan of text-to-speech. I actually bought some text-to-speech voices for my Mac years ago. They were expensive, and the libraries took up gigs on my system hard drive. I love the idea that I can generate a text script and a virtual actor reads it, but those early computer voices were not like the new voices. They were robotic and sounded like the words were assembled phonetically. Weird, but charming, like 8-bit. These new voices sound less artificial, it's more Westworld than Robbie the Robot. But they can still sound bland, corporate, monotonous. I guess I'm not complaining. AI is creating the future, I'm just trying to keep up. It's still not perfect, but it's a different kind of uncanny valley. When I was buying individual voices for my Mac, I had to pay extra for voices with a high sampling rate. If the voices have a low sampling rate, you can hear a weird flutter in the words. They're just lower quality, but the advantage should be the computer can assemble the voice in closer to real time. What moved Mike Monster to the top of my list is they don't restrict the audio sampling rate so the voices don't have that low quality flutter. The downside is I don't think Mike Monster can be queried in real time like a Siri or Watson. Mike Monster is not that fast. 5 or 10 seconds is way too long for a real time response. I checked, one of the competitors locked their better sampling rate behind an enterprise account, that's for a real-time customer service feature, which I don't need. It would be cool to have, but if the trade-off is between real-time and better audio quality. I prefer quality. Mike Monster didn't really have any competition. No one else offered a higher sampling rate at the trade-off of waiting a few seconds longer. Also, they have a lot of English voices, and some voices have multiple voice styles. The styles are samples from the same voice actor, but cheerful or sad, shouting or whispering. There's an excited style that is talking fast. Whereas terrified was like calling 911 after an accident. Hopeful was like talking to a precious bunny. Actually, the styles aren't quite that straightforward. Different voices use different style names. It's not clear what's the intent sometimes. Mike Monster lets you try all these voice styles for free, but without a subscription, you will run out of free recordings just trying to hear all the options under one of these voices. I think this technology is in progress. It's cool, but it's not available across all the voices. I'd say there are five or six of the American English voices with these different styles. Interestingly, none of the British voices have styles. I'm not really sure all these styles are useful. There are a lot more voices, lots of English voices with world accents. That's potentially a lot of NPCs. Anyway, you probably know what I'm after. Can all these voices be, if not my main actors, can they be secondary characters? Can I use text-to-speech as stand-in files until I'm in a state to get funding for real voice actors? Lastly, am I going to get my money's worth, or is this some kind of scam? Does it even work as promised? Well, there is a free trial, so start with that. Like I said, it will get you a few recordings, but the subscription ad kicked in around the time I started trying to see if I could get through a whole scene of scripted dialogue. I quickly ran out of free recordings. Now so far, I haven't changed much about this script. I haven't added emphasis on many words. I'm letting the AI choose the inflections. This voice style is called chat, and it seems very natural for one guy just sitting and talking to the camera. Now I've switched to general style. Can you tell the difference? It's subtle, a little drier, slightly less enthusiastic. But the style's called. Friendly. Unfriendly. Cheerful. And angry. Have a different sound quality. It's not awful, but it's not seamless. There are a lot of styles under these special voices, but they aren't consistently recorded. 
The volume and timbre changes. It sounds like a different recording session, a different microphone, or different EQ settings. I'm interested where this goes in the near future, and for now the style voices create some options. But having a lot of options you don't use is just a lot of clutter. I'm not saying they are bad, just don't be taken in by the promise of infinite voices. You will still need to be satisfied with the limits of someone else's voice and the options according to the AI. You know, reality. One thing I did was spell Mike Monster as M-I-K-E. I'm not even sure I needed to though. There's a phonetic panel where you can type out the sounds of words. But I find that the AI is usually spot on. I actually have to remove commas sometimes. The AI is better at finding natural pauses in a long sentence. A feature you don't get to try before paying for a subscription is the advanced editor. That's where you can select a sentence and edit the inflections by clicking up to five points on a graph. Is there food in here? 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 While I think the AI voice sounds natural on its own, the AI doesn't have any context to what it's saying, so the sentences do just flow all together. In this chat voice style, I can talk and talk without ever stopping. But when I tried back and forth dialogue, I found a couple of issues. First, scripts with different voices? That's another paid feature. All the complex options are locked behind the paywall in an advanced editor. They say there's an app coming, but it's just a website for now. Editing a long script for emphasis is time consuming and it's a lot of clicks. I don't see how this becomes easier on a phone or tablet. Editing a lot of text on a web page is always cumbersome. I think the website has room for improvement, but it's usable. With the subscription, you can save projects, and with each audio clip you create, it saves the text, which can be loaded back into the editor. My emphasis data seems to be lost when I reload an old script, but at least I have the original text. It would be a nightmare to keep all these sound files organized without a script. Since this is a cloud service, I expect that Mike Monster will not save my audio clips on their server forever, but I couldn't find any information how long they are saved. As long as my original text file is still there, I guess I can edit it and regenerate a new one. I saw log notes that certain voices had been updated. That's another reason why clips might need to be regenerated. I guess by now you can tell I bought the subscription. I like that I could try the real voices and hear the high quality sample rate for free. The catch to the subscription is it renews at a higher price and you'll have to contact them to cancel. Also, the first payment is cheaper then the price goes up. Remember I am the nerd that bought extra voices for my Mac? I paid the one-time payment, which is over $100. I will definitely use Mike Monster for the next few years, so for me it seemed better to pay up front. If you're trying to make any sort of project, you'll want multiple projects and the advanced editor, the advanced features. That's what you pay for. 
Also, with a subscription, the script can be a lot longer too, although it becomes unwieldy to edit and listen to. I'm trying to max out this script so I can have an idea how long a recording can be. The website is showing me a character count for my script. I seem to have a limit of 12,000 characters. That's got to be 10 or 12 minutes of audio. The website takes a little longer to generate the audio file, but it's happening faster than real time. I'd say less than 10 seconds for 12 minutes of audio. There's a few features which I haven't tried, but I honestly think the goal is very short audio clips. I feel like that's how I'll be using them. One feature some of the other digital voices offered that Mike Monster does not have is the ability to make a replica voice from your own voice recordings. That sounds cool, although I don't really care about having my own voice replicated. It's just technology one would like to play with. Mike Monster does not offer voice replication. I found a different service that does it, but again, they limit the sampling rate unless you pay for an enterprise account. Well, I guess I don't need a lower bit replica of my own voice that costs me money every month. This feature ended up not being a deal breaker. Mike Monster wasn't missing out on anything I could actually use. See? Right there, I changed the word use, U-S-E, to use, Y-O-O-Z. Imagine you're this late in the script and need to make one tiny change. The advanced editor allows me to select a short phrase and preview it without re-rendering the entire 12-minute script. I'll be honest, some parts of the interface did not make sense until I tried using Mike Monster in different ways. With this long script, I need to select and preview. In another project, I tried short back-and-forth dialogue between three characters. I learned that I will need to be more organized before I download all that onto my computer. I was able to reload the individual dialogue elements and re-edit their emphasis graph. The audio clips can be dragged into a different order and then merged. I feel like the people at Mike Monster are making a product that they use themselves. It doesn't just feel like a quick UI slapped onto a server. It feels like they are making an easy-to-use web tool with a wider appeal of YouTube marketing. But one more feature that Mike Monster appears to not have is an extensive API or a consistent tagging system that can be added to scripts as markup. Instead, Mike Monster uses the five-point graph for emphasis. It works by selecting some text and then drawing this up and down line, traveling from left to right. Different voice styles are going to have different samples associated to the emphasis parameters. It is sort of a guess where the syllables will line up, left to right, and there's no way to know how many levels of voice has been quantized to, high to low. How many more of you are out there? I found the unfriendly voices worked great to sound snarky and sarcastic with a vocal fry when the emphasis was set the lowest. My final review of Mike Monster? I liked it enough to pay for it. The sound quality stands out, and there are a lot of voices, some with styles, although they are not really character voices, you won't find a supervillain or little old lady. Mike Monster is going for natural sounding text to speech for voiceovers and marketing videos. Some voices have a style called newscaster. I was hoping for something bombastic and fun, but the voice style just seems to articulate words and speak slower. Some of the options sound too hammy, others don't sound hammy enough. I love having so many English voices with accents, although again these aren't character accents, just the speaker's natural voice. One thing I plan to do is create ambient crowds and conversational murmurs. I'm sure it can handle occasional NPCs and filler characters. Because the sampling rate is clean, the pitch shift sounds clean too. I can pitch some of these voices higher and lower. Lastly, Mike Monster gives you a commercial certificate of use. That's my review. I'm at 12,000 characters. I'm out. Bye!